today we're talking Curves, a photo editing tool with more power than Marvel's Infinity Stones. So powerful in fact that Luminar AI has it hidden away from mere mortals like us. And if we do discover this photo editing hidden gem, isn't it more complex than a 10 by 10 Rubik's Cube? By the end of this video, not only are you gonna understand how curves work, but you're gonna be able to use them and start implementing them in your own photo editing workflow and therefore be able to take more creative control over your photo editing process. So let's get into it. Curves is a tool that not only allows us to precisely control contrast, but we can use it for creative looks and even color grading as well. So we're gonna look at all of that inside of this video. But the first thing we need to do is understand how curves work. On the left-hand side of the graph, we're representing the very darkest parts of the photo, the blacks. And moving all the way to the far end on the right, that represents the whites with all of the tonal ranges in between. So moving from left to right, we can control the blacks, the shadows, the midtones in the middle, the highlights and the whites. How we control those values is by putting a point on the curve, raising it up to brighten it, or bringing it down to darken it. It really is that simple. Let's take a look on this example. So to find the curves in Luminar AI, we need to come to the edit section. From there, we need to choose the light section. And then at the very bottom here, we can drop down the curve section and reveal the curves. If we put a point on our curve and lift it up in the middle, we're brightening the image up. If I pull it down, we're darkening the image. Brightening and darkening. Pretty straightforward, right? If we want to get rid of a point we've made, we simply double click it. Quite a common use for the curves tool is to control contrast. And in order to do that, we need to put some points on our graph. So I'm going to click and add a point at the center point. I'm going to add another point further down and this will control our shadows. So if I bring this up, we're brightening the shadows. If I bring it down, we're darkening the shadows. So I'll put a point there and we can do the same in the highlights as well. So if I lift this point in the highlights, you'll see that all of a sudden her skin starts to brighten up. So now all I need to do is manipulate these points to create some contrast. So what is contrast? As I'm sure you'll know, it's the difference between the brightest parts of the image and the darkest parts of the image that determines how much contrast we have. So if we can push the highlights brighter and darken the shadows darker, we're gonna increase that level of contrast, the difference between the two. So let's do that. We can grab the shadow point and start bringing that down. We can grab the highlight point and start bringing that up. And what I've created here is quite an extreme version of what is known as the S-curve. And that is very common in photo editing. Let's have a quick toggle of our before and our after, and you can certainly see that we've increased that level of contrast before, after. I would never normally go this extreme with a contrast adjustment, so I'll just pull that down just a little bit to protect her skin tones and just bring the shadows up just a little bit. As you can see, to get the most out of your edit, it's important to move these with subtlety and a little goes a long way. So by adding that S curve, we're actually able to introduce contrast into our scene. But conversely, we can also control and reduce the contrast if we have a particularly contrasty scene. So we can lift the shadows, bring the highlights back down, and they'll get closer together, therefore reducing the contrast. Let's take a look at that. I'll grab this point here and move it up. I'm gonna grab the highlights point and bring that down. And just like that, if we toggle our before, you can see that we've successfully reduced the contrast. So now you've got the basics, let's get a bit more creative with it. In the background of our curves panel here, you can actually see a histogram overlaid in the background, which is a really useful tool for showing us the distribution of the tones within our image. If you're not sure how to read a histogram, don't worry, just write histogram in the comments below. And if I get enough requests, just like this video, I'll make one dedicated to histograms. But at its most basic, the histogram is showing us what tones actually exist in our photo. And so currently, the very far right hand side, which represents pure whites, you can see that we don't have a pure white point. But in this photo, that might be okay. But even though we are dealing with skin tones, we still have highlights like right on her nose here and the upper part of her cheek as well. So before you start playing with the contrast itself, it's a really good idea to shift the white and the black points to actually start where the histogram starts. So let's grab this point on the right hand side, which represents the start of our curves line. And we're gonna bring it in to a point where it's level with the start of the histogram. And once we're happy that we've nailed that, we just simply let go of the mouse. And one of the really cool things about Luminar AI is once I let go, it actually redraws the histogram based on the new tonal range that exists in the photo. Pretty cool. 
It's a little hard to see what's going on at the black point here, right in this bottom left. But if we look at the histogram up here, we can actually see that the graph clearly starts just to the right of the far edge. So what we can do again is grab this black point and just start moving that up until we feel like it's just starting to touch the start of that histogram graph. And once we're happy, let go. And again, the graph is redrawn. And the fact that this graph just kind of cuts off here kind of suggests that I've gone a little bit too far with this. So I'm just gonna bring it back and let go each time until this graph redraws. Okay, that looks better. So all we've done here is move the black and the white point. And if I toggle our before and our after, you can see that already we have a much more punchy and clean looking image to work with. And from here, we can now manipulate that curve, add an S curve if we want and control the contrast. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull a little point down here in the shadows. I'm gonna grab a point somewhere in the middle of the curve and start raising that up. That's gonna give her skin a nice glow to it. And by the very nature of this tool, it's always trying to keep a nice smooth curve. So just by the fact that I've lifted this central point up, you can see that the highlights have boosted as well. But that doesn't stop us grabbing another point and being a little bit more finessed and just controlling that exactly as we want it. I want a nice glow to her skin, but I don't want things to get overexposed in the highlights. So I can put another point on and just bring that down. There's actually no real limit how many points you put on the curve to control it and manipulate it, but I normally find anywhere from sort of five to six is the maximum that you're going to need to get a really good control of your photo. Let's have a quick look at our before and our after. We've definitely added a lot more contrast to this image, but one of the side effects of adding contrast is that your colors can become more saturated, sometimes oversaturated. And that's what's happened here because we've been quite aggressive with the curve, particularly because I want you guys to actually see the effect it's doing. I wouldn't normally be quite as aggressive with this, but if you do push things quite far, what you can do is just jump into the color section and grab your saturation slider and just bring that down to a point where you feel happy with it. If you've ever wondered how you create that really popular faded vintage almost filmic look where well, you do it through curves and it's actually really easy so let me show you how all we do is grab this bottom left hand point and we just start to lift that up and as I lift it you'll see that we're brightening everything up in particular that black point and then you can determine where you want to set that black point is this making sense to you guys if it is just write make sense in the comments below so that I know and if this is being helpful to you please do me a favor just show me some appreciation just by clicking that like button because that means we're to me and just helps my video in the YouTube algorithm. So let's lift it quite high for this example just so that we can get a good feel for what it's doing. And if I look at our before and our after, you can see that we have a much more faded and washed out kind of vintage look. If you lift the black point and feel you're losing some of that nice contrast, we can just grab the shadow slider and bring that down. In the same way we raised the black point up, we can also grab the top right point and just bring those whites down and that's just going to help us create that nice faded look. Just click on the point. You may need to hold it for a second just to activate that point and then just start to bring that down. So already just with the tone curve, we've been able to correct the black and white point, brighten our image, work with the contrast and replicate the popular faded film look. But there's even more to curves than that. We can jump into the red, green and blue channels and actually create a color grade that is uniquely ours. Let me show you how to do it. So the icon on the far left obviously gives us access to our tonal range, but the red, green and the blue tabs here give us access to actually talk into the colors themselves and what we can do is click on the line and start bringing it up and that's going to introduce red into our photo and if i bring it below the line that's going to take red away which is effectively the same as introducing the opposite color which in computer terms is cyan again we can double click to remove a point that works the same for the greens if we click and add a point on the line and bring it above the diagonal line we're going to introduce more green if we bring it below the line, we're going to introduce magenta. I'm pulling these curves about quite aggressively, but obviously changes this extreme aren't really recommended for your photos. And finally, let's jump into the blue channel. And again, we can see that we can introduce some blue or we can take it away, which is the same as introducing some yellow into the photo. If we click and add a point in the middle and bring it up, we're introducing blue. If we bring it below the line, we're introducing yellow. Now, one thing that we can do is actually click and add a point into the shadows. So we're just introducing blues into the shadows. Alternatively, we can add a point here and 
bring the blues away. So we're taking blues away from the highlights and there we've created pretty much a split tone between blue and yellow. We're also not confined to just putting points on the line. We can actually grab the end handles and actually move these as well. So if I take the blue point in, we're introducing blues right into those white points and I can bring it down and we can do the same but introduce yellows. So for this example, why don't we add a little bit of blue into the highlights perhaps even introduce a little blue into the hair and then just to counteract that we'll just bring the actual tones in the shadows down towards those yellows keep some of those blues in the mid-tones and if we want to we could perhaps add a little bit of green into the image as well all right with those changes in place let's have a look at our before and our after here's our before here's our after that is quite a significant change when you consider all we've used is one tool do let me know in the comments guys if this video has helped you understand curves and right now you should see another video popping up that should be of interest to you so why don't you click on that and i'll see you in that video thanks for watching you haven't clicked it yet click it it's getting awkward now I'm going. Click it. I'm going.